What's going on coders and welcome to episode 7 of our HTML service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. In this video we're going to be talking about Apps Script's Window History API. So this API's main purpose is to allow us access to the browser window history stack. So this is analogous to say the HTML DOM's window.history API. If you're familiar with that in modern JavaScript, then you'll be well prepared to tackle and learn this google.script.history API. So let's look at these top four methods. They are google.script.history to start off, and then the push method, the replace method, and then set change handler method. So we're going to take a look at each of these in the code. So let's jump over there right now. So again, this history API is very similar to the JavaScript window.history object. However, if you remember, when you write a web app within Apps Script, they double iframe your code just so for security reasons. So however, what that means is that you cannot access the history stack from the traditional way of doing it, which is again, the window.history object or API. So you have to use this specialized app script method. So let's learn that right now. All right, so this is what we have set up so far. We have our HTML code. And again, we this is all having to do with a web app. This API is all about web apps. Um, so here's our backend code. We have our uh, very familiar and very simple function do get. All we're doing is we're returning a HTML content file. And then we also have our our function include external file. I've gone over these in previous episodes, so they should be familiar to you. All right, so again, here is our HTML code, and I have included a CSS file and then also a JavaScript file. So let's look at that right now, just very quickly. Um, here it is right here, just in case you were curious to see how the web app was stylized. All right, and then also let's take a quick look at the JavaScript. Here it is right here. Um, we're gonna go over a lot of this very soon, but just take a quick look for now. And now let's look at our UI. So this is the web app that I have for the demo of uh, the history uh, API from Apps Script. So all it's showing is my favorite recipes. There's a nice pretty blue background. And I have four of some of my most favorite foods right here. And they are chicken tikka masala, stuffed crust pizza, surf and turf, and chicken and waffles. And if you click on one, as you can see, uh, we are viewing the recipe for stuffed crust pizza. If we click on another one, say chicken tikka masala, then here we go. We have uh, the recipe for uh, chicken tikka masala. Let me just refresh this page right now, though. All right, so if we go now into the JavaScript, let's look at that within the code. So we have our database, and I say database in quotes because it's not actually a database, it's just a JavaScript object, but we're gonna pretend that we are extracting this data from an actual database. Again, you can always hook up your web application to something more complex. In fact, I suggest you do that if it's especially sensitive data um, to something maybe like Google Sheets on the background or on the back end, or a more complex database such as Firebase or any SQL databases, anything like that. All right, but for now, again, for simplicity, we are just putting all our data within a JavaScript object. So we have the meal name and then the recipe as the value. All right, and then now, also, we are setting up an event listener, right? So for, for each of these different meals, we say when it is clicked upon. So, it's set, so again, uh, here's our event listener when it's clicked then we're going to run this function right here. So basically we're just gonna say run the function, display recipe, and here's the that function defined right here. All it's doing is it is setting the inner text of this container right here as a uh, either stuffed crust pizza or whatever you click on, and then it's also going to display the recipe for that meal name. Great, and then I'm also defining this right here, a, a variable called params. We're gonna look at that in just a couple seconds. All right, so as we have it, again, it is very simple. We just click on it and then boom, there we go. We have the recipe. And then here we have something like stuffed crust pizza and there we go. However, let's say that we want to now, let's say, okay, so we're at stuffed crust pizza. Let's say 
If we hit this back button, we want it to go back to the recipe of chicken tiki masala, right? If we do that now, it's not going to take us back to chicken tiki masala, right? We're, we're going forward, we're going backward. It's not changing the recipe. Um, let's say we wanted to, uh, when we click this, it goes back. And then, by the way, guys, this is the history stack. Just in case you were unsure what I meant by that, uh, this is the history stack. So, again, the history stack is all about going forward and backwards within the window browser. And your browser records all of the, all of the pages that you have been. So let's say again, we wanted to click on back button, take us back to chicken tiki masala. Well, the way that we would do that is first we would need to alter the URL of that because again, if the location, it's it, we look at the location of all of these different uh, uh, URLs that we've been to. So in order to add something to this history stack, we need to have a unique URL to put in there. All right, anyways, let's go into code. I think it'll make a little bit more sense once we start typing out some stuff. So again, this history API is accessed through google.script.history. And now let's go over our first method for today, and that is the push method. So the push method basically is going to append a certain location to this history stack. So all it's gonna do is it's gonna be like, all right, Here's our history stack. Let's just push a new history object to this uh, stack right here, or this array of locations. So this method takes on three parameters. The first one is a state object. Uh, so I'm gonna talk about that very soon, but, uh, or I'm gonna talk about it very briefly, but we're going to get into more of it uh, later in the episode. Basically the state object is if you have like a location say like this one, you can you can pass the location into the history stack. You can also pass any associated data with that location, which it gives you a little bit more flexibility on what you're passing into the history stack. And it can be very helpful at times, as we'll see in just a few moments. All right, so right now, all the data I'm going to pass in is just the meal name. You can pass in an object if you want. I'm just gonna pass in a string, which is going to be equal to the meal name. All right, the second one, is your parameters. So these are the parameters that are going to be inserted into the URL. Again, after the question mark, we, we looked into this in the last episode um, on the location object. However, so right now, this parameter is, sa is saying meal equals stuffed crust pizza. All right, so again, I have the parameters set up right here. It's going to be meal and then whatever the meal name is. All right, so that is our parameters um, uh, argument right here. And then the last argument is the hash value. And for right now, I'm just going to hard code the string hash. So again, the hash value is whatever comes after this pound sign right here. Again, this is just additional information that you can put within the URL itself. Right now, it's not going to help us that much, but I'm just going to put in this uh, object or this string, this data just uh, for completeness. All right, so let's see this in action now. If we uh, save this page, refresh our web app, and actually let me get rid of that just so that we can see. All right, so we're at our web app, and now if we click on Chicken Tiki Masala, and by the way, let's look at our, actually, you know what? Let's go, uh, let's go back. Let's go back, 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 back. All right, so now we have nothing in our history stack, right? And if we delete all of this, by the way, um, now we have one thing in our history stack, right? So let's say we wanted to go to uh, Chicken Tiki Masala. And now, as we can see, we just clicked on that. We got our recipe right here, which is what we wanted. And then also we got uh, this data passed into our URL. And if we now look into our history stack, we have two separate uh, elements in our history stack array, basically. So this was the page we were just on, right, with no parameters. If we now click on stuffed crust pizza, we can see that chicken tikka masala right here, you can't see all of it, but based on the C, I'm guessing that is the chicken tikka masala. That page that we were just on was just sent to our browser history stack. And if we hit the back button, again, notice the URL, it says stuffed crust pizza. If we hit the back button, that takes us back to the location, chicken tiki masala.
Great, and then now, again, that has been popped off. There is no more chicken tiki masala in our history stack. Great, so now let's look at another uh, uh, method. And that is going to be, let's quickly take a look at this because it's basically the same thing. Um, just a little bit different functionality. So instead of pushing a uh, object to or a uh, state to the history stack, we can actually replace the top item of that stack with a new uh, state. So let me just uh, save this right now and we'll see this in action. So again, I'm using the replace method now, not the push one, again, the replace one. So what replace does is it does not append a new state to your history stack. What it does is it takes the top item or whatever state we're on right now and it replaces that uh, with whatever is the top item. So again, let's let's take a look at this. So we're at chicken tiki masala right now, right? So that is our top item on the history stack. On the history stack, it's the chicken tiki masala. However, if we now click on stuffed crust pizza, it's going to replace our stuffed crust pizza, or it's going to replace that object, the tiki chicken tiki masala object, with now the stuffed crust pizza object. So if we look at our stack again. Here it is right here. Uh, actually, we never refresh this page, unfortunately. So uh, here we go. Okay, so this is chicken tikka masala. We're on stuffed crust pizza right now. If we click on, um, let's say, surf and turf, then if we go into our history stack, we can see that stuffed crust pizza was never added on to this stack right here, right? This UI right here. And that is because our surf and turf replaced the state of the stuffed crust pizza. So I can just click on all of these. It doesn't really matter. I'm clicking on all of them many, many times. And what it's doing is it's just replacing each of uh, the previous state with the new state and nothing is being added on to our history stack. So that is just the replace method. Um, it's just, it's something that you can use for more functionality and it's good to know. However, we are gonna go back to the push method. All right, so let me save this, and now let me refresh. So there's one more thing that we have to do before this is a fully functioning web app. And, and let me, I don't know if you noticed it before, but okay, so we're at chicken and waffles now, right? Um, so if we go to stuffed crust pizza, that's great. Now let's go to chicken tiki masala. All right, so we can see that stuffed crust pizza was indeed added to our history stack. However, if we click the back button and take a look and reference this URL right now, if we hit the back button, indeed it does go back to stuffed crust pizza. However, our data, our recipe still displays chicken tiki masala with the chicken tiki masala recipe. And that is not what we want, right? If we hit back, we want all the data to be going back to whatever state uh, was stuffed crust pizza, right? We want it to be displaying stuffed crust pizza, not chicken tiki masala. So the way to do this is we need to now call on an additional method uh, which is set change handler. So let's say google.script.history.set change handler and this what this basically is doing is this is a trigger uh, basically this function is going to fire this method is going to fire whenever we go we whenever we traverse through the history stack. So whenever we click the forward button or the backward button, this method right here is going to be called. It's going to be triggered. So the argument that we need to put in there is a function. And we can get past an event object. Whenever this is fired, there is an event object associated with that. And this is where our, our state object, all that additional data that we can pass in through each of these elements in this history stack, all that additional data that we passed in through the state object, this is where it's going to come in handy. So let's call the method display recipe. Again, that's what we want to do. We want, or the function display recipe, we want to display a new recipe whenever we traverse through the history stack. And what recipe do we want to display? Well, we are going to display uh, whatever is. Um, whatever the data is that we pass through in the state object, right? So that is, we're passing through the meal name, and now we can access that again using the event object that we are accessing, and then the state parameter on that. So now if we hit save, 
and we go back to our web app. We refresh the page. Again, we have stuffed crust pizza, and let's just click on chicken tiki masala. Here's our recipe for chicken tiki masala. Let's look at surf and turf. There it is right here, a great recipe. Now let's say, hmm, surf and turf, you know, that's kind of a complicated recipe. It might take a lot of time. I'm going to go back to chicken tiki masala. So I'm going to hit this back button. And then now we have traversed back in the history stack, right? We, we went back to chicken tiki masala. And not only that, but our, our set change handler method was called. And we got the data associated with chicken tiki tiki masala and we can do this all day we can traverse through the, or we can add new items we can push new items to the history stack and then we can just click the back button and then all of that data now has been saved and it's being displayed to us in this container right here so guys I know this was maybe a little bit tricky and it's going to take some time to understand it and recognize where you can use this in your use cases. However, I have used this a couple times in my own project, so I think it's going to be helpful for you sometime in your journey as an app script developer. Anyways, guys, I hope you learned something and I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons, and I'll see you in the very next episode.